Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. A quick info before we begin. Today's video has two stories and both of them have updates. Now let's get started with the first one. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Dating an Atheist. My 19 female atheist boyfriend, 21 male, burped loudly during grace. So I've been dating Kevin for a couple of months now. I was raised Christian and while I very much believe in God, I wouldn't consider myself super religious or anything. I go to church maybe 10 times a year. Because of that, I thought I might be compatible with an atheist. So anyway, on Sunday, Kevin and I went to my parents for dinner. It was their first time meeting him. I thought things were going well until we sat down to eat and my dad started saying grace. I was looking down, but out of the corner of my eye, I saw Kevin grab his drink and he chugged it. Once he's done chugging, my dad is still saying grace this entire time, mind you, he lets out this really loud open mouth burp. My dad stops saying grace to look at Kevin. My dad's mouth was hanging wide open but didn't say anything. Kevin doesn't say excuse me or anything, so my dad awkwardly finishes saying grace. The dinner itself is painfully awkward. No one acknowledges what happened, but my parents seem pretty annoyed with Kevin, so they make small talk about the weather, what he's taking in school, etc. After we finish eating, I make up an excuse for us to leave and I drive Kevin home. On the way home, I asked Kevin what his problem was and why he was so rude during dinner. At first, he didn't seem to know what I was talking about. I say it's rude to drink during grace, never mind burping as loud as you can afterward. He says he's an atheist, so he doesn't have to wait for that kind of thing. I said that was ridiculous as he was still a guest in my parents' home and he should follow their rules. Then he goes off saying those rules are BS and he keeps going on about how religion is the worst thing ever. By the time I drop him off, I'm pretty pissed and want nothing to do with him. I haven't talked to him since, but breaking up with him is a given. That's not why I'm here. I'm here because one of the things he said to me was why was I dating an atheist if I expected him to act religious? I didn't think simply not eating or drinking until after Grace was acting religious, but now I'm questioning that. I know Reddit is very pro-atheist, so I want to get opinions from other atheists. I've never dated one before Kevin, so I don't know. He says any self-respecting atheist would do the same as he did. Is that true or is he just an a-hole? My cousin had warned me about dating an atheist, but considering I don't take religion too seriously, I didn't think it would be an issue. Maybe I was wrong and I'm not compatible. Yikes OP, Kevin is an a-hole, there is no doubt about that and it has nothing to do with him being an atheist and you being religious. I mean, if you remove religion and have the same setting, this guy meeting your parents and he just chucks water or whatever he's drinking and then belches because that wasn't a burp, that is a belch. But regardless of definition, it is still rude, you don't do that. Also, I've never asked an atheist this question, but I'm pretty sure that table manners is a thing for them as well, so yeah, I don't think any self-respecting atheist would do the same as Kevin. Kevin is just an ass. And apparently he's one of those self-important annoying ones. I mean, he said that he doesn't need to wait for your dad saying grace or even respect him because he's an atheist. It doesn't work like that, you idiot. Respect goes both ways. It doesn't matter if you disagree with somebody else's view of the world or their opinion or anything. Being courteous doesn't take away from being courageous. And while Kevin might think he's the coolest atheist in the world, he is just an ass. So yeah, OP, in my opinion, breaking up with him like you already intend to is of course the best way to go. And no, OP, don't beat yourself up. This guy's just an idiot. It has nothing to do with you. And yeah, you're incompatible. And what do you guys think about this whole situation? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Noah the Red says, Kevin didn't behave that way because he's an atheist. He behaved that way because he's a rude little crap. Quote, he says any self-respecting atheist would do the same thing. End quote. No, no they wouldn't. He did it to get a rise and act somehow superior. Kevin is an idiot. Source, atheist that has sat through many prayers, graces and weird spiritual moments other people have. I keep my mouth shut and usually just think about food or what beer I want or sometimes cool movies. 
And Opie responds, thanks, I know you're right, but Kevin has this way of talking that makes it seem like everything he says is correct and I guess it made me doubt myself. Crayon Dove says, also an atheist, but I have a huge interest in religion from a scholarly standpoint. You don't belch in front of your partner's parents at the table, grace or not. He is a pig. I have sat at many a table hosted by religious people. I've attended Shabbat dinners with Jewish friends. I've even said grace. I don't have to believe in it to be respectful of it. They are not the same thing. I'd dump him via text, seriously. Tell him he's a pig and then block him. Don't even debase yourself long enough to do it in person. Just a thought from me says, he is absolutely wrong. He's using his atheism as a cover for him being an a-hole. Just because you don't have the same beliefs as others doesn't mean that you can't respect them. Your boyfriend probably has the mindset that he can disrespect all religions because he doesn't believe in it. And that's wrong. In his argument, replace the word atheist with Muslim, replace it with Buddhist, replace it with Pastafarianism. No matter what you were to change it to, it doesn't change the fact your boyfriend was disrespectful to you, your family, and your family's beliefs. Additional information from Opie's comments. He's 21, I'm 19. Also, reading the comments made me realize just how much of an a-hole he is. I started to think about past times when he refused to think he was wrong. He's very arrogant. I don't know why I didn't realize that until now. I was already planning on breaking up with him, so I sent him a text a little while ago saying it was over. His response was, whatever. Thank you everyone for the responses. You are absolutely right that this is a matter of Kevin being a jerk. Nothing about atheists. He's not worth my time to be honest. I'm done with him. He'll have to figure out just how arrogant he is on his own. Okay, well the community agreed that it had nothing to do with him being an atheist and all of it to do with him being an a-hole and this solidified OP's decision to break up. Now just one side note about how Kevin always talked like he was right. My guess is that he was either gaslighting you every single time or he was always using straw man arguments to beat the discussion, you know, ridiculizing your point of view so that he looks like he's right. Just something to keep in mind. Anyways, let's move on to the update to see what happened next but of course before that here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after this video. Now let's move on with that update. First of all, I want to thank everyone who responded to that post I made. I got a lot more responses than I thought I would and that really made me see how in the wrong Kevin was. So as I said in a comment, Kevin and I broke up right after that incident and I told my parents. They were actually shocked by his behavior. Apparently they spent a long time talking about whether they should bring it up with me. They are both very non-confrontational type people and they always said they would try not to pass judgment on who I date. But Kevin was just too much for them and they were planning on telling me what they thought of him. So they were definitely relieved to learn it was over. Anyway, this whole incident made me realize a lot of things about our relationship that I guess I didn't see clearly before. He really was arrogant and manipulative. He had this way of saying things that made it sound like he was right 100% of the time and that anything I said was stupid. It wasn't until after I read all of the comments that overwhelmingly said he was in the wrong that I realized just how manipulative he was. Maybe I should mention that Kevin was really hot, like really hot, so maybe that's why I didn't know how much of an ass he was until way later, lol. So this isn't so much of an update as to our relationship, it's a funny story I heard. I've been working a summer job for the past while now in my hometown where both Kevin and I live. It's not a tiny town where everyone knows each other, but it's not huge either. Anyway, at work I was talking with some of my co-workers on break and the conversation about terrible exes came up. The story that my one co-worker decided to share was about, you guessed it, Kevin. Apparently they dated about a year ago. My co-worker, let's call her Brenda, had to go to her cousin's wedding and Kevin was her plus one. During the ceremony, Kevin got really bored and he decided to let everyone know. Apparently, he started saying stuff like, Oh my god, this is taking so long and is it almost over yet? And he kept going on and on. He wasn't so loud that everyone could hear him, but the people around him definitely could. Brenda said a lot of people were turning their heads to look at them. She was super embarrassed. 
Apparently, they got in a huge fight between the ceremony and reception, and that was the end of their relationship. Lol. I couldn't help but laugh when I heard that story. It sounds exactly like something Kevin would do. And oh, I definitely did not pass on the opportunity to share my Kevin story. Anyway, that's it for my update. Things are going well for me. I'm currently enjoying single life, just working and hanging out with friends. One of the things that Kevin said that really bothered me was that religion never does anything good. That bothered me, so I started volunteering with a charity that my church helps run once a week. Just organizing stuff that's been donated. Maybe I let him get to me, but it feels good to help out. I don't hold anything against atheists. You guys totally convinced me the problem was Kevin and that many atheists are cool. So thank you for that. Well, OP, I'm gonna call this a fortified happy update. I mean, we already knew that you broke up, but now you just know from other people's accounts that Kevin is, in fact, a big, big a-hole. Just goes to show you once again that you made the right decision. So here's wishing you all the best in the future. Thank you so much for sharing, OP. Take care. Now, let's move on to the next post that, like I said in the beginning, also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Grad04, my best friend, 22 female of 16 years who has never shown interest in me, surprises me, 22 male at my graduate school apartment and seduces me into a friends with benefits relationship. I've known this girl, Erin, since we were in elementary school. Our families are really close and our parents are best friends and neighbors. We would often spend countless hours together at each other's houses. It got to the point where we could literally let each other in each other's houses or rooms without parental supervision, which was a big deal as kids or teens. Now, I've always been attracted to her. In middle school, she was cute. In high school, she was extremely attractive and we went to prom together as friends. I've told her a few times over the years how I felt and she was always saying, you know, let's just be friends and that would be weird, pretty much turning me down. We grew distant in undergrad due to us attending different universities and then she studied abroad but still kept in touch from time to time, Skype, text, holidays, etc. In undergrad, I started working out seriously and playing soccer. We both played since we were young. I've never been out of shape but I've never been this physically defined in my life. Then, after graduating college, I went to grad school where I stayed in a single apartment on campus. I leave a key at my parents in case I ever lose or forget mine. One evening, I'm taking a nap and hear someone coming into my apartment and by the time I open my eyes and get myself together, Erin is already sitting on my bed. I'm thrilled to see her. It's been nearly two years at this point since we've physically seen each other. She crawls over, hugs me, and that's when I realize things kinda went differently. She leans in and instead of the normal, hey, what's up and how's life? She kisses me on the lips. I'm blown away, shocked and beyond happy. Kisses lead to touching and touching leads to sex. When we finish, she tells me I better get used to her because she was attending the same graduate school. She says she wants to do more of this. And mind you, at the time, I was still on cloud nine, so of course I said sure without thinking. That was nearly three months ago, and now she comes over some days and we talk like best friends, and other days it's just a lot of sex. My emotions are all over the place. As if it wasn't bad as her best friend, being friends with benefits is really a challenge for me. To my knowledge, she has no boyfriend, no love interest, or anything like that. But whenever I bring up dating or anything serious, I'm met with sexy time and an open-ended, we'll talk about it later, or let's just have some fun together and think about it later. Should I just be patient? Our friendship dynamic has changed. I'm aroused just by the thought of being alone with her, now we're hiding things from our parents and friends, and while I feel like I'm falling for her more and more, I haven't any clue as to what she is thinking. Ugh, OP, this is a really difficult situation because there could be so many different scenarios. She could be simply using you, or she could be testing out the waters, or she could just be acting on an impulse. And of course, there are more situations, but it's not about that. It's about you and how you feel and how you want to protect yourself. The way I see it, you've got two choices. One would be to tell her that you just can't do this and you would need to try to be friends again, which I think it's kind of difficult considering sex has already happened and you're pretty much in love with her. 
The other choice you have is that you just keep going with the friends with benefits thing until something happens, which could either be that she drops you, she gets bored, you know, she just wants something else, or in a more wishful thinking kind of way, she might want to go for a relationship. But regardless of any of this, once you make a decision of which path you want to go through, you need to do it with your eyes wide open. Meaning that if you choose door number one, the relationship or the friendship might very well end. And if you choose door number two, you might get your heart very well broken or not. But those are the possibilities and you need to be aware of them. And what do you guys think about this whole situation? What would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Hungry Chuck Biscuits says, enjoy it while it lasts because it'll abruptly end at some point. Don't get emotionally attached. And if you are, end the friend with benefits for your own sake. And OP responds, I'm about three miles past the don't get attached part. All I can really do is enjoy it while it lasts and see where it goes. We've been friends for this long and we've always been there when we needed each other. So here's hoping there is another reason she hasn't given me an answer. Moonlight Racer says, if she won't give you a definitive answer, that means no. She just wants a friends with benefits, not a relationship. You need to end this arrangement. And hit the road, John, yeah, John, says, look, reread your post. It's clear, one, she has the hots for you, and two, she either doesn't want a relationship or more likely doesn't see you romantically. So what do you do? I'd try to distance myself emotionally, focusing on being friends and reinforcing that the sex is meaningless and enjoy the ride while it lasts. Additional information from OP's comment. Despite her coming back into my life, she hasn't said a word about what happened or her experiences in the last two years where we lost contact, like something she purposely and tactfully avoids with no boundaries. I'm not one to dig. We have always been the type to wait until each other is ready. We are pretty similar. Whenever I try to talk to her about something she doesn't want to talk about, mainly her studying abroad, she will do almost anything to get me to change the subject. I know something big happened overseas or something. I probably should have included this in my original post, but I tried to keep it short. Our relationship might terrify me, but it's the most fun I've ever had with her, and at least I get to spend tons of time with the girl I love. I'll win her the old-fashioned way and just show her how much I care. The way I see it in black and white is either we end up together and live happily ever after sometime down the road, or she leaves me for someone else which causes our friendship to end anyways, for an extremely long time. And I don't want to regret not biding my time to see where we could have gone. Alright, well the community laid down OP's options for him and he chose ride or die, so he's gonna see how this thing plays out. Which means we move on straight to the update to see how that went. Despite most people, including many of my closest friends, telling me to just end things with her or force her into a decision, I decided to just write it out accepting that I'd probably get tossed to the side when someone better came around for her. We went on to be friends with benefits for about four months, and those were honestly the most nerve-wracking months of my life, never knowing when or if it was going to end or what she was really thinking. I tried my best to play it off as if it didn't bother me, but really, it was a bittersweet time for me. After our school semester ended, we drifted apart a little bit. We both were spending time with family and friends. We both had extremely busy semesters and spent most of the time studying or with one another, so it was expected. She went on vacation with her parents to visit her grandparents in England. She didn't invite me to come along months ago, but I already had other obligations, so I couldn't go with her despite wanting to. We talked on the phone a few times while she was away. I actually had an annual soccer tournament with my traveling team and we met this girls team at the tournament that I was telling her about it since she plays soccer as well. She seemed happy for me that I was having fun, but I could tell that it was bothering her. I just chalked it up to maybe I sounded like I was bragging or something. Two weeks later, she asks me if I could pick her up from the airport because she flew back early and she nearly knocks me over when she hugs me so tightly. 
She had never shown so much intimacy in public before. She even tells me that she really missed me. It's like 8pm and we go to Starbucks and she's being like really different. A lot quieter than normal and she seems a little nervous around me. Like she wants to say something. Eventually she confesses that she realizes that she does like me as more than just a friend and she apologizes for her unfairness in making me wait so long before giving me an answer. She tells me that before she left, she didn't really know what she wanted. She didn't know if she wanted a relationship or if she was ready to be in one. She said that she was afraid to get into a relationship with me only to realize that she didn't want it and feared that our friendship would never bounce back. She told me that she experienced a lot of things in England and was sad that she wasn't able to experience them together. She talked about her older sister who lives in England who really put in some good words for me. So, we're officially dating and everything has been awesome, I couldn't be happier. I think waiting it out was the only realistic option I had anyway. I couldn't see myself ending our friends with benefits relationship with her because I was always a bit spineless when it came to Erin. Especially during the semester when spending time with her was the highlight of my day. Could have ended up painful, but I'm grateful and counting my lucky stars that it didn't. We have things we need to work on like every other couple, like I don't fear losing her but I often find myself trying to spoil her. She usually goes something like, you can't always give me everything, or sometimes more subtly she'll make a joke about wanting something outrageous so I can learn to say no. Our communication has picked up considerably. I think we both thought we knew a lot about each other being best friends for so long but there is a lot that we are both surprisingly still learning about each other and it's great. We've bumped head a couple of times in a good way and it's always been a positive outcome. Our families both took it really well. Her dad was expecting it and wasn't surprised in the least. He had been expecting it for a long time. He said he had his suspicions and even bet his wife that we would end up together before the end of the year. My dad joked about it last weekend when we had a cookout. Our moms keep telling us that we are just the cutest thing they have ever seen. I think overall everyone is happy for us. Thanks for the advice on the original post, really gave me some solid perspective. Well OP, there's no other way to call it, this is a happy update, you got the best result you were hoping for. Now you guys get to grow together and learn more about each other. So here's wishing you both the best in the future OP, thank you so much for sharing and take care. And that's it for today's video, thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out, so here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later, and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button.